Welcome to The Property Couch, where each week you get to listen to two of Australia's leading property experts. Bryce Holdaway, co-host of Location, Location, Location Australia on Foxtel's Lifestyle Channel, and Ben Kingsley, Chair of Property Investment Professionals of Australia, and the 2014 and 2015 Property Investment Advisor of the Year. All right, folks, you're on The Property Couch, where each week Ben and I bring you the insider's guide to property, finance, and money management. Welcome back to The Couch, mate. Mate, always love doing The Couch. I know. Today's exciting. We've got a uh, yeah. very special guest yeah, today. Yeah. But uh, before we get there, Ben, let's, um, go. let's go to our Mindset Minute um, theme today. And mine is, uh, it's, it's not that uh, complex. The little choices you make make a big, big difference because it's the little decisions that shape or determine the quality of our life. So, for example. Yes, this would come as a surprise to you, but I'm a perfectionist personality no. type. Right? So I tend to f- focus on the details. Don't you hear him adjusting his paper, everyone, every <laughs> minute? He's lining everything up. Wait a minute, Ben, move your glass. That's it. Now it's the line. No. That wasn't an invitation for you to tee <laughs> off, but that's okay. That's It's, it's actually true what you just described. But... Um, when you make, it's the big decision you decide to go on a holiday, right? And then you got all that right, you got the planning, but it's the little decisions that you make. And for me, I like to leave on time. Mm-hmm. So if we sort of leave half an hour late, that's that sort of... That's <laughs> plays with your... Play, plays with, uh, plays with my mind. But here's the deal, you know, I can get really grumpy, you know, we've left 30 minutes late. But what I've done is I haven't really uh, focused on the little decision because for the next three hours in the car... Nobody wants to talk to me. <laughs> so, so is that is that the, is that the gold? Is that the bit? So sort of saying, well, oh, beautiful! I can catch up with well, a few. Well, maybe podcasts. Andrew's antagonising me just so that she gets three hours apiece. But uh, so my mindset minute today is just just have a think about the little. It's not the big uh, decisions that we make necessarily. It's the little choices mm. that we make along the way that make a very very big difference. But um, uh, let's uh, let's crack into our Ivis. Hey, you just right, wanted just a little cameo a there on the table. Making a noise. How many how many times does she tell us not to make any noise on the desk? <laughs> But uh, hey, our uh, very special guest today, um, Josh and Jenna. Mm. Don't have to say surname. Everyone knows Josh and Jenna, <laughs> don't they? I'm hey guys, my name being first today. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for having us. Thanks for coming on the couch. Now you guys um, uh, describe yourself as the husband and wife renovation duo. Mm. Um, no, no surprises there. Best known for your appearance on the 2011 series. Yep, of the Block. The Block, the All Star series. And then Reno Rumble. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So and Club you've... for punishment. <laughs> yeah. What were you thinking? Oh, Is there no. anyone else who's done three? Oh, I suppose that's technically two, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, technically two. No, I think we are the only ones who've done the three yeah. shows. Yeah. I think there's yeah. been some all-stars ones, but yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, we said we'd never do it again after the first one, and every time they call us, we go, "Yeah, sounds great." <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Lock us in. Well, uh, you've just welcomed uh, little Freddie into the world, so congratulations on that. Firstly, but uh, quick question is, what's more exhausting? Um, newborn baby, <laughs> being on the block. <laughs> the block, honestly. The, the block's block. harder. This yeah. whole time, everyone's like, "Oh, wait till you have a baby." Wait, wait till, till you have, have kids. And it is tough. It is very tough. Yeah. I think we're lucky. We've got a, a good baby. We've been told Jen says is a midwife, so she's like, "She's here with us now. She might make a cameo." Yeah. In a minute now. <laughs> yeah. So Brooke's like, "Guys, you got a really good baby. She sleeps well. She feeds well." You know, so um, so so far the block's harder. The block, the block's so been far. harder, but yeah, there's sometimes where maybe the baby's harder. <laughs> <laughs> Can we check in in a couple of months? Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah. maybe yeah. That's going. But, but that's that's terrific. But um, you guys, uh, I guess, were known for um, bickering. Yes. On on the block, how, how does that tracking for you guys with uh, a newborn? Is there any? <laughs> well, we thought we got rid of the bickering a couple of years ago. Actually, we sort of said, yes, we're not that couple anymore. But the baby has definitely brought back the bickering. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely has. So I think it's making a bit of a comeback, but that's all right. We who chose the name? Was the the Freddy's, baby's yeah, name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we both did actually, and she's actually named after a furniture store. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a store called Fred International, and we went, oh, Fred, that's a cool name. But we needed to make it girlier, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Freddie. So oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Both, there wasn't any bickering in that. No, no so <laughs> the, yeah, the, the the idea was it was a boy. I was going to name it a girl. Jen was going to name it. And then um, obviously we didn't know what we were going to have. It was a great surprise. Um, but yeah, we, we like the sort of boy girl names. Yeah, 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 um, exactly. So we had a few up our sleeve. But everyone just wants to know, yeah, if it was a boy, what's it going to be called? And we're like, we're not going to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. Now, with um, do you do you guys actually watch the block, or is it uh, you know? Sort of yeah, we can't watch it. No, nah, we, we, we watch can't. it in our heads all day long. We just relive it, don't we? Yeah, <laughs> we know too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just brings back like you see the guys are judging um, at the end of the week when Scotty's there giving the feedback, and 
it just brings back like it's it's really stressful like and it's oh, hard hearing anxiety. uh like how all the bad things and good things about what you've done like it's really tough so um it's good to just be able to switch off and like, i really can't watch any reality tv on on the other hand this <laughs> one can't get enough of it so all the trashy, trashy shows, reality so, shows she does oh, yeah. oh. it's a good show on the lifestyle channel that you could check out <laughs> <laughs> um I do a television show where we're in control of the edit, so they have got an editor that's pouring over <laughs> looking for all the best bits. Whereas in that scenario, you've got someone looking for all the jeopardy and all yeah, the yeah. come after the commercial break sort of stuff. So, what does that feel like for you guys to know that uh, you know being on there three times to know that you, you're not necessarily going to be in control of what actually gets put out there in in the, the public arena? Yeah, well, that's the hardest part, isn't it? There's so yeah. much footage that shot. Like you got to remember. Each, con- each contestant couple has got a camera crew following them around pretty much from 6 a.m. till 10 p.m. every night. So you've got all that footage times by two to three months and they only can air one hour a day when they're mm. filming you for, you know, what's that, 12 hours a day or more, yeah. like longer than that, like, you know. So um, I think, you know, they just simply can't show it like it's impossible. But, yeah, look, being control freaks, it is tough not knowing because <laughs> like, we're literally watching it as everyone else is watching it. Because yeah. so, yeah, you haven't seen it. Yeah, and, yeah. and no. something really funny might happen and then you're like, oh, it's going to happen tonight. And then you watch it and you're so devastated because you can't relive that special moment. <laughs> no. And then they show something really bad. You're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, look, that's just the way it is. And obviously it can't be too bad because we've gone back three times. But, yeah. yeah. So because halfway through, are you <laughs> do you sometimes take a moment to lie in bed and go, what do you think the storyline is they're going to take on us at the moment? We like, sort of do that yeah. as yeah. the sh- like the second yeah. time we did that as the show was filming and and the first time um, for those who watch it will know that we didn't sell a house at auction. Yeah, and they had a lot of trouble selling the house at auction and the market actually wasn't that bad yeah. around that time I believe in sort of twenty. No, it was. It was oh yeah, pretty just bad at it just moment. crashed. Yeah. That's right because we bought at the peak. Yeah. yeah, and then it crashed. So we bought it yeah. at a bad time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, look, we're just just lucky to do it a few times. I suppose made some great friends, and we've learned a lot of yeah. our property. In the, the meantime. good we have to take, you know, the good and the bad because at the end of the day, because of our bickering, we got invited back to do the All Stars, and because mm. of the All Stars, then we got onto Renault Rumble. So yeah. now we just. You know, we're happy to play the villain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing about television. They don't, they don't want vanilla. They, yeah, they, no. they, yeah. they want the RG They will take the bullet for the network. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, you, you mentioned that it didn't uh, sell at auction. It sold afterwards. You did oh, make yeah. $50,000. Yes. Um, I, you said you didn't watch it, but I'm sure you're not immune to the fact that uh, people... Some have made. Made an, of, of, Yeah, like a million a dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I think every second season it goes crazy, and yeah. that's the season we're not on. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally the way it is, yeah. But the, it's funny because the first time we did this whole vintage style, we thought we were really clever and stuff, but obviously you're going to sell the property, you're really narrowing your buyer because, like, Yes, you're preventing people from falling in love with it. Here's our. That's pretty. pretty. Yeah. Yeah, she's like, I'm I'm uh, <laughs> she didn't stay on the show notes. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the, the second time when we, when we did the house in Bondi, it was like a terrace house. Yeah. And we just like, righto, white walls, keep everything simple, keep it, you know, modern. And because um, like, it's pretty non offensive and, you know, spend the money in the kitchen and the bathrooms. And we walked away with like 275,000 and we came very close to, to winning that one. We came yeah. second. So, yeah, like, and we learned a lot from that. So we've sort of grabbed that model and used it on a few of our own properties in the meantime. Yeah. Good segue. So you guys uh, have got some property in the Melbourne marketplace. I think you're um, around the corner here with a, a North Melbourne sort of renovation that you're doing. So what, what did you know about renovation prior to the show? Because I know you're a plumber. But yeah. what, what did you know about renovation prior? And then what's the curve been like since? Yeah, so we bought our first house. I was 19 and we're from Aubrey Wodonga originally. Mm -hmm. So we decided that we wanted to buy around the area because we wanted to move to Melbourne. We always wanted to move to Melbourne, um, but we knew we couldn't afford it. So we thought we'd buy a little property in Aubrey Wodonga and renovate it. The time we were both apprentices, I think, think or even just just qualified. We really weren't making, we're just like blue collar workers yeah. like we weren't really earning a great deal of money so yeah bought this little house and we literally lived off baked beans and renovated it for two or three years and we got enough equity in that property to be able to come down to melbourne we moved down packed up the ute brought everything <laughs> down like and then we you know ended up investing in maidstone mm. which at the time everybody told us we were absolutely crazy when we bought maidstone we had family there. members going oh my god like what have you done like mm. this place is a dump it was in 2010 when we were looking at buying 
um, we're getting outbid on properties left, right, and centre. Like we had a budget of like four ninety, and that was stretched. That was borrowing like five thousand dollars of our parents. Yeah. And um, like we're making offers on a house in Newport. It was four hundred seventy thousand was the asking price. When we inspected it, we like literally fell through the floor in the hallway. Like it was it was a dump. <laughs> um, we made an offer for like four ninety straight away. Someone made an offer for five thirty. This is just like private sale, and yeah. then it sold for whatever. And we found this great place in Maidstone. We're living in South Melbourne at the time. It was close to the city. Um, it was like on a six hundred square meter block. It had an old terrace house like right in the middle of it. So. Yeah. Um, it was a big block and then yeah I, I, I bought it at auction um, Jen was at work at the time and everyone just said we were mad basically for, for buying but I think we knew that it was 8k's from the city it yep. was just it was, it was yeah, just, just had to go on yeah. actually so, yeah. it was we bought it for 467 and a half and straight after the auction someone offered us 50,000 more that's right yeah, and no we I actually waited nearly, for me yeah, yeah and we, we actually were like maybe we should just take that and run yeah, <laughs> I was signing the contract yeah. so I walked outside and the guy goes look I've been waiting for you here for like 45 minutes and he goes um, oh, I'm a builder and I'm just about to sell a property he goes I really want this one I'll offer you like fifty thousand dollars more, and I said, "Mate, come back in a couple of years and offer me two hundred thousand dollars more." <laughs> and, um, yeah, like yeah, it yeah. turns out, I was pretty accurate, you know. Yeah. So we um, had an old house on it, and we moved in, and then um, and then yeah. we got on the show. That's right. Yeah, yeah. we got on the show. So this was our first. And got an extra fifty thousand there as well. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so we got our money. Anyway. That was hard work, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That but was hard for three work. months. It was basically just like a shell in, right in the middle of the block. Um, we renovated that and then we decided to subdivide it. So we made yep. like a battleaxe block yep. and renovated the existing house. Then we sold that existing house. We bought our one in North Melbourne yep. um, pretty much in the same month. It was pretty hectic. Mm. And then, um, yeah, we, we built a townhouse at the back for um, to get some rental income. And, in Maidstone. Yeah, yep. just keep our sort of foot in that market. Yep. Yep. So, so obviously, um, you know, one of the lessons you're talking about on the block, it's a good lesson for all of our listeners around just not going too ostentatious. Oh, now, sure. you know, when you're talking about demand, we want owner-occupier appeal, but we want to go mainstream appeal, not exclusive or different types of tastes. So especially if you're renovating for profit. Definitely, in yeah. In terms of what that looks like. Yeah, look, you just got to keep it like stock standard yeah. and then just choose carefully where you spend the money. So Yeah, know your market, I think, is yeah. the key. We, we usually decide to spend money on the floors, um, the bench tops or the appliances in the kitchen, um, and we do a really good lighting plan and we think that the combination of that with styling can really... Well, it's it's built in I loved yeah. your styling. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, 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 it spoke to me a lot in yeah. terms <laughs> of what it looked like. Whereas yeah. some hang of the on, other... Hang on, hang on. You, you were watching the block. No, I, just, I would tune in at the end of the season and just do the auction oh. and then go and have a look at the bathrooms in the kitchen. <laughs> See that I was thought he was going to No, no, no. no, no. The I'm, I'm, off record. I'm, I'm like a plumber. I mean, you don't go home and, and read plumbing magazines. Do you? <laughs> no, no. So I don't go well, home. Every tap in our house is leaking. You know, like, I know our toilet's running through all night. I can hear it, but I'm just like, I'm not fixing it. <laughs> Last thing I want to do is go home and look at property you yeah. know, all the time. It, it gets a bit after 22 yeah. years, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, I cut you off. No, no, go. Um, so I guess, what do you guys ultimately want to achieve in property? You've had a, you know, a, a higher profile um, entree into it, but what, what's ultimately the end goal for you guys um, as you trade up these properties? Um, ideally, we just want to buy the properties and then renovate them or keep them for as long as we can. I mean, it's hard to say now because the property price is so inflated. Mm. Like there was a few areas we were watching. So when we were in Maidstone, we were looking at Footscray and North Melbourne um, and sort of Ascot Vale. And it just so happened that this house popped up in North Melbourne. So that's where we ended up and, and Flemington as well. Sorry. Yep. Yep. Um, so look, we just want to renovate our house in North Melbourne, make it our dream house. Yep. So we're probably overcapitalising in a sense. Um, but because of the way property's gone, like we're not overcapitalising now, I suppose. Mm, yeah. um, and then ideally, like like a getaway down the beach or something like a beach shack would be great. Yep. Um, yeah, we've talked a lot actually about our, at the moment, our house in North Melbourne is, we've turned the original 19, 1870s cottage into a self-contained studio and we're living there at the moment. So it's one bedroom with a baby, two dogs and two adults and, it's, um, <laughs> it's and a pram and a it's bassinet about and a change table. Block again. Wow. <laughs> it's actually really hard to be home. Yeah. <laughs> so I go to the park a lot. Um, but we've actually really enjoyed designing a small space and yeah. I think that's the way that 
the, the property market will go is that we'll be having small spaces. People will be converting garages, cars will disappear mm. and we'll be turning them into little self-contained studios. So we've talked quite a lot about, you know, buying little properties around the place, like maybe a block of land and putting a little studio on it mm. and then doing the whole Airbnb or short-term accommodation thing. Because for us, you know, the joy for us is in the styling of it and making it look beautiful and yeah. kind of that final bit mm. um, and we're going to put our cottage and we've called it canning cottage we're going to put that up for rental and so yeah. if we can kind of collect properties in great little locations make them little mm. small getaways that yeah, sort of that would be a dream for us I, th I think just yeah investing in blue chip property I think yep. so the the money we've made off our North Melbourne house in equity um, has been more than what we made off in Maidstone with going through the subdivision and you know doing all that sort of thing so mm. I think we've learned now that you know, if you, if you can afford the blue chip areas like, and you know, the nice street, close to transport, lifestyle cafes, it is worth stretching yourself. Like we, we had two cars and you know, what's a car say 20 grand a year, they say with depreciation and servicing mm. and fuel and all that sort of stuff. Um, we, we got rid of a car. So we've been in North Melbourne nearly, nearly five years now. So that's a hundred thousand dollars, you mm. gotta think. So mm. we, we got rid of a car and spent a little bit extra money, you know, on the mortgage. And um, yeah, we've been able to, come out not too bad in the end because of it. Yeah, well, we've got another client, Sam, who bought recently in North Melbourne. Hmm. And same thing, he Uber. But oh. he, he hasn't had a car for years. I mean, yeah. he's an international IT guy, yep. so he's around, the, around and about all the time, but he hasn't had to have a car. Yeah. yeah. So not only is it the operating cost but and the depreciation or the rundown cost, mm. but it's actually, if you're paying sixty or $70,000 for a nice car, mm. there's, all, there's also that big amount yeah. at the start. Yeah. And you know, also there's $5 options. an hour parking, you know, in the <laughs> city and <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah. So, but, like, I've learned to ride my bike everywhere. And the suburb's great, like it's literally got everything mm. in it. It's got hospitals, which has been great for little Fred, and um, it's got banks and cafes. Like we, we actually don't don't leave the suburb, you know what I mean? So, yeah. And you've got the metro coming in soon. Transport yeah. only gets better. Arden is going yeah. to be developed into a sub city yeah. section. So, I mean, you've picked a cracking yeah, crack spot. spot. I think too, because yeah. like, I work construction in the city a lot, and a lot of the guys I work with live out in, in the east. And they're paying like, you know, hundreds of dollars a week in, in e tags and mm. fuel and you know, it's costing them like, you know, some of them like three hundred dollars plus a week to get mm. to work and I yeah. said that's like a, a three an quarters of a good mer a mortgage, yeah. you know. Yeah, so. or an extra day's work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. yeah. 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 like they've got kids tax. and that sort of thing. So I think we've been fortunate enough, like we have been able to buy at the right time and we've had a bit of a kickstart with the block and that sort of thing. But I think if you just research, like read your magazines, watch your property shows, do all that sort of thing. Um, get on realestate.com, save all your favourite properties, and then that way, in you know, a few years' time, you can check up if they come up on the market again, yeah. what they're selling for, and do your research and you know, you minimise that risk. I think it's great. Oh, you're Aubrey Wodonga guys, and you want a beach shack. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the best weather in the <laughs> over the Great Divide. My, my folks have got a property in Yarrawonga. I'm, I love oh, really? Yarra, it's yeah. It's great country up yeah. there. I mean, like, maybe, maybe something up there as well, just so, <laughs> yeah. you, so you can get to the ski field <laughs> and the beach. Up there, right? <laughs> so what are you, what are you guys doing? Um, I know you're into interior uh, design. You've yep. got a school. But, yep. uh, I mean, you, are you just mixing it with the boys on, on the, the sites? And yeah. you're, just, you're not um, Josh from the block there. You're just um, oh, doing it. But they still give me a little bit about being on the block, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, like so, I'm uh, I'm doing plumbing, uh, like commercial stuff, so multi-story things. Well, I, I don't mind it. It's um, I start work at seven. I'm home by like three, mm. and um, you know every second Monday off, and so like it makes it easy to go to work. And look, compared to the block, the days go pretty quick. So <laughs> um, I actually don't mind it. But I think I think long term, it'd be nice to be a stay-at-home dad and spend more time with her. But look, design school's going great. Um, and yeah, there's a few other things like we've got um, ambassadors for beacon lighting and mm. that. So, you know, maybe it is time to hang up the boots soon, but I feel a bit cheeky saying I'm going to retire at 31 or whatever. <laughs> but, um, yeah, look, I think for now, as far as property goes, at least till our house is renovated. I'm, uh, I'll stay, you know, on the books. Yeah. yeah. And Jenna, how's, how is the school going? It's, uh, you know, teaching people how to uh, have that design Style. eye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how to sell. Yeah, it's great. It's really good. We have three classes running, so about 75 students at one time. And it's 
I love it and it's you know evenings so I do mm. 6 till 9 p.m. of an evening a couple of times a week so it's perfect for Freddie because you know I go to work and Josh comes home and um, takes her for the night so we don't have to worry about childcare so at the moment we're really really lucky I mm -hmm. think with with our jobs and with where we live and yeah we've we're at a good time in our lives, I think. <laughs> so, so, Jenny, you were talking about when you first bought in Albury, Wodonga. Yeah. Um, you're an apprentice. What were you doing yeah, at that I was time? Yeah, hairdressing. Hairdressing? Yeah, yeah. So, I was a hairdresser for about seven years and then got on the block. And as soon as we had the first experience of the block, I just couldn't go back. Yeah. I just loved it. So, I went and studied interior design after that first season got my qualification and then started our business, which is Bicker Design, yep. <laughs> because we were obviously bickering a lot. <laughs> bickering yeah. a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Um, and then decided that we would start the school a couple of years later. So yeah, it's kind of been an amazing journey because for us, if we hadn't have done the block, you know, again, I probably would have still been hairdressing and long hours and have to take off time. On your feet all yeah, day. Yeah, exactly, off work if I had a baby. So it's just worked worked out. So how did that audition go? I mean, you'd done one Renault. Um, obviously, we had trade skills, you're yeah. handy. But your, your eye is obviously yeah. really strong. Was that natural to you? Or was there any inspiration? How did that come about for you? Oh, look, if you the first season was pretty dodgy. I wouldn't say I had a, I would say that we had a good eye of the first season. What's that first house? Like, you don't want to Can't see go the wrong with grain white. <laughs> oh, look, it was okay. It was okay. We definitely got better after time. But I guess being a hairdresser, I definitely had, you know, a passion or an eye for colour, you yep. know, in that sort of industry. So it was yep. a little bit more creative. But, yeah, I guess for our audition tape, you know, for those of you wanting to apply for the blog, it's probably a little bit harder now. I think there was probably only 20 people to choose from when we got on oh, yeah. the show. But <laughs> now I would say there's probably 20 million people <laughs> trying to apply. But obviously we argued on our application tape. And <laughs> then we wonder why we were made the villains that argue. So, you know, we've definitely put that on ourselves. We have but to remember, like, the, the series before us, it was on, like, one night a week. Yeah. So we went into it thinking, oh, it's going to be on one night a week. Turns out it was on seven days a week mm -hmm. and um so we literally finished the next day it was on tv and yeah it was just it was just hectic it was so hectic and it was such a big production and yeah like life has just been it was yeah. pretty crazy yeah i mean you guys are one of the biggest names in in australia at the time once you go through those finales it I was mean, a big time yeah like what? we had the open houses and it was just yeah oh, there was like lineups and people it was screaming a two your name thinking... like for the houses and it was yeah, it was ridiculous. So how did, how did you um, process the fact that you guys were on telly fighting and then all of a sudden there's kilometres of people lining up just to, to have their photo with you? What, how do you process that? It was, it was really hard at the time because at the time Facebook was quite big and a lot of trolling on social media. So we struggled a lot with that. Well, oh, okay. I struggled a lot with yeah. that um, because obviously we were made to be the villains at the time and I was 23 and literally had no idea what we were in for. We're just we, two young kids from the country. We, We'd only renovated one house. We've just started we a what. massive one and we're way out of our depth. With. And the fact that all of these people that we didn't know were then judging us and telling yeah. us that we were awful people or whatever they were telling <laughs> yeah. us you know now I would laugh at them but at the time I took it really personally and then you know to see the crowds of people I remember saying to Josh I don't want to see these people you know they hate us yeah. but then when they started coming through and all these little kids were going can I have your autograph it was it was a turning point for me and so yeah. after that point I sort of went you know stuff the trolls <laughs> 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 you know social media it's so much better today than it was but at that time it was at the prime of people yeah. feeling like they could be keyboard warriors so, yep. Yep. yeah, it was a tough one. The 2011 block was tough, more so because of that element rather than the actual renovating, to yep. be honest. What were the days like after that uh, that auction? Because you guys were bitterly disappointed. <laughs> um, it was very, very bittersweet because I, I proposed to Jen on the show. So before that, um, like I organised, I said to the producer, look, I'm going to propose to Jen. So I had to get the ring and all that. Um, which is a whole other story in itself. Um, but yeah, like we got time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was a very yeah. Well, um, I went into Tiffany's on the the grand opening day, out of and this is in the peak of the block. So my face was on TV yeah, seven yeah. nights a week. So the the executive producer um, Julian took me there. And he had me in the car. We parked out the front in a no standing zone. He goes, I'll be back. And he just went. He had me in a trench coat and a fedora. <laughs> and I was sitting in the car like this. And then I heard this tap on the window. And I was like, oh, my God. Because they had, like, all the 
the magazines and stuff there, like shooting the like, grand opening and yeah. the newspaper was there for Tiffany's. And then this parking guy's like, I'm going to tell you, you need to move. And I didn't have the keys because the guy's inside. Anyway, we went in through the back door. They brought out a box. I chose the ring in that and snuck back out. And then, yeah, had the had it like jammed in my pocket on the show. So you'll see me with my arms crossed, like trying to hold the, the, the bulge <laughs> the of the ring box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the ring box is so big, I couldn't get it out of the jacket pocket. Because you know how tight they are. So I'm like, there's a photo of me Cut. like with my face Cut. screwed up. Yeah, <laughs> Scotty Cam didn't know. Like, the only person that knew was Julian. Chris and myself and like your your dad didn't even know which I think he was a bit bitter about but <laughs> I was like whatever, whatever. Um, but yeah that was um, it was very it's very bittersweet I remember we went for pizza afterwards and it was sort of like yeah you know we're engaged and then we're like oh this hard work sort of didn't really pay off and it was very very strange feeling yeah yeah the whole way along we were told oh you'll make a hundred thousand and you know it'll be really great yeah. and we mm. were sort of like oh my god and we were working too so you can imagine like all that time off work, we were like flying to Sydney every weekend doing promo stuff and Brisbane and we're flying around Australia and um, you know, like it's a big So we hit. would have lost 50,000. Yeah, I reckon we probably yep. lost about 50,000. Well, it was yeah. two of us for probably like four or five months not yep. working. Um, so yeah, it was very, very strange time. But yeah, like overall, like unbelievable experience. Like we've got friends on the show that we talk to today on and off camera. You know, the production crew and all that so yeah mm-hmm. when they tapped on the window how come you didn't wind the window down and take the hat off and say that you know who <laughs> <laughs> oh mate Back i didn't off, even like, know that that choosing the ring was like so it was just very it was a very full-on time like yeah i think I'll, yeah anyway <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a plumber like, so, uh, <laughs> should just very far down and said right you know <laughs> yeah do you know anything about diamonds yeah i should have so, said what's that over there and just gone, <laughs> <laughs> so with your renos, have you been following a, a formula around budget? Obviously, mm. they give you a budget on the show. Yeah. Um, but, you know, are you looking at that $1 down for two return or is there any sort of uh, assessments or feasibilities you're doing before you start? Definitely, yeah. yeah. Which sort of go for $1 to three. Yep. <laughs> yeah. well, that's that's it, best practice. Yeah. If, if yep. we can or if not more. But as Jenna said, like, um, we use the Maidstone, if we just talk about the Maidstone townhouse, so yeah. obviously there's an oversupply of townhouses there, which is, you know, it's quite a scary thing when you're in the market with something that's a similar product. Yeah. So we just spend the money on um, nicer timber floors, so like nicer engineered timber floors that can be sanded. Um, bifold doors. Bifold doors, French doors, uh, massive kitchen with a big island bench, all stone, yeah. 900 appliances. Um, the lighting plan. So basically, we just like to focus on that first impression. So it's a double story townhouse. Yep. We spent all the money from what you could see from the front door. So yep. kitchen, bifolds, flooring, yep. lighting, and then upstairs was just carpet, grey carpet, white walls. Yep. You know, With good styling much. at the end of the day. That yeah, pay yep. a, we paid uh, the real estate stylist to come in, yep. um, and best money we've ever ever spent. You know, like yep. we've the, the auction result went well over reserve. And um, as soon as we walked in, like, we were tricked. Like, we were like, this place is awesome. <laughs> you know, yeah. We're like, we're moving in. <laughs> it was a really, really good product. The thing for us was it was on a really busy road, Category 1 road, which is a highway. Yeah. Um, so we had a townhouse with it that was oversupplied on a busy road. Um, so, yeah, we just had to make it feel like an oasis when someone walked in that door. Yeah. And, um, Block yeah. that sound out. Yeah, so sure the sound and just walk in and go, this is awesome. You know, it's an escape from the street. Yep. Um, and, and it's what happened in the end. Yep. And then so with North Melbourne, similar sort of thing. You've obviously this, I mean, we talk about, you know, this is geese laying golden eggs. If you can hold on to them as much as you can, they're just going to keep going up in value (laughs) and you're going to get a rent roll from them. How good is this game? (laughs) It just makes sense. Whereas when in some cases, some people have to flip just to build up to, you know, or we call it about, you know, getting up the property ladder. Yes. So I did the same thing. I had a dream home in mind, but... We basically, I still bought single fronted houses or bought the house in Bandura, then moved up and moved up. And yep. the first one I've sold, but the others I've been able to keep, you know, yeah, a the, hold of. And that's, yeah. you know, and all of a sudden you wake up 20 years later and there's a multi million dollar yeah. property portfolio. Behind. Yeah, we were really, I guess we bought North Melbourne probably one house earlier than we would have liked for our dream house. Yep. We always thought we'd do one more renovation and then buy our dream house, but it came up. And I'm so thankful that we did because, mm. you know, I guess the thing with selling and buying in the same market is that you actually don't make any money (laughs) because you know you make a lot of profit but you've got to pay a lot to buy something so we were really lucky that we did buy our dream house because now we don't need to look into the market to buy that house that would be four or five hundred thousand more expensive than what we paid now it just Um, popped up because you you found it you said i'm going to take you to see this house maidstone was on the market hadn't sold yet this is the existing house we renovated 
and Jen drove up the street and before we even saw the house, I go, we're going to buy it because the big yeah. wide street, oak trees. And I said, we're going to buy this house. And then um, first day of inspection, boom, here's our offer, take it or leave it. They took it and we just went in hard and strong with a, with yeah. a high offer at the time and Great. we got it. Yeah, so we kept the back townhouse after we subdivided and sold the front house at Maidstone. We kept the townhouse and we thought we'd keep it forever, to mm. be honest. Um, the rent was covering it. We had awesome really tenants. great tenants. tenants we ever. really didn't even know that we had it, to be honest. We just remembered this year because it was just a low maintenance <laughs> property, which was great. Wait, that's the way yeah. they Yeah, which like was them. great. But I did email uh, an agent that we used to sell the front house and I just said to him, how much is this property worth now? And I always thought if it's worth a, you know, worth an X, X amount that we would sell it. And it was 150000 over that. So I was like, <laughs> oh, let's sell it. Yeah. And Josh kept saying, no, let's not sell it. Let's keep it for Freddie. And well, I was, was like, no, nah, stuff, Freddie. We'll... <laughs> <house. laughs> let's sell you're it. Listening to that every, <laughs> every time she cries, we're like, oh, you're just sad because we sold your house. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we were lucky because obviously then to be able to sell in a really good market, we are able to pay our renovations for North Melbourne. Yeah. And again, because we already had our dream house in, a, in the right know, location, in the right location, yeah. then it's just sort of yeah. worked out well for us. Yeah. And is that that's now going to allow you to leapfrog into your next? It basically is basically renovation. Yeah. Is yeah. For sure. yeah. So the idea of our North Melbourne renovation is that, as I mentioned earlier, we've got the period property at the front that we've turned into a one bedroom studio. Yep. And then we're building a new dwelling out the back. So that will be a three bedroom house. And it's a small block. I mean, it's about 220 square metres. It's about 40 metres deep yep. and five metres wide. Uh, yeah, so okay. the yeah. studio is about 32 square metres. Yep. So I think now, what's the average? Uh, one bed apartment. It's about Look, it's normally 40, 42. Yeah, so yeah, so, it's, so 32 is yeah. like very, very small. Yeah, but it's, exactly. It's got laundry, kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, yep. like built in everywhere. So and then so we've got the, the cottage and then a courtyard and then another house behind it that's going to be like a three bedder. So. And so as you know, we talked about, I think that the idea is this small space living. So we've got this mm. cottage that we can either lease out to yeah. then pay Airbnb, for our back renovation. Every day of the week. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Every yeah. Day of the week. Yeah. Or, yeah. you know, if we decide to travel, put the back house on the rent market and then we can just use the front house as a base that we can come back to if we decide that we want to come in and out so I think that moving forward it's that whole idea of you know multi-generational living we can have yeah. our parents come and stay with us or look after Freddie for mm, us babysitters. you know yeah. exactly or we mm. can travel and have the you know have somebody pay our mortgage off because we can lease the bigger portion of the house because we're thinking out. more kids no. No. <laughs> no. Here we go. It's, it's no. only eight weeks. You can't ask yeah. that. No, that's not right. Maybe. I always like to ask now. Yeah. I mean, so we sit, catch up with you guys in two years and there's a second one. I'm sure it's pretty no, common. No, no. Yeah. yeah, look, our architects rendered two kids playing in the house, you know, when they did the concept and we were like, delete one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> delete oh one. Yeah, no ideas. <laughs> There's, uh, there's actually like a really great movement. I think it's on Instagram. It's called How's People Not Cars. Um, I think it might even be a hashtag or an account. I'm not quite okay, sure, but yeah. I follow it. And it's basically saying like, everyone's got these garages, mm. you know, like, and, and as you know, like we've got a 32 square meter house, which is probably like not even a double car garage. And yeah. that can house two people comfortably or a two point. Yeah. And um, so like, I think that's the way things are going and, and having this design with sort of like a dual occupancy on our block, and it's a, it's a standard terrace block, so yeah. most houses can mimic this. Um, I think it's really sort of opened our eyes, and now that we've forced to live with less and just what we need, and and have it really well designed, so lots of storage and everything's got a place, you know, and. Um, yeah, it goes to show you that, that you don't need like 30 bedrooms and the pool and the tennis court. Yeah, yeah I think that's yeah. the key is the that, backyard, you know, yeah. all these little small apartments that aren't well designed are giving small spaces a bad name, yeah, you definitely. know, in the oversupply. But I think if you have small apartments and small mm. houses, as long as they have been designed to the inch of its life, yeah. it's actually harder to design, way harder to yeah. design a small space than it is a it big is, space, yeah. way harder. Once you got the template though, so basically all, all the joinery is built in. So we've got a built in sofa rather than a actual sofa yep. built-in dining table that sort of can unclip off the wall we got like storage a custom bed we had made up with like big drawers under it and there's just yeah it's got bells and whistles all over the shop but yeah it's been actually pretty pleasant to live in other than the change table so <laughs> so question without notice do you reckon we could get you guys to maybe do a little video and walk yeah. us through it? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Get it up on the yeah, yeah definitely because I'm fascinated by it. I mean, yeah, obviously yeah. you know the Scandinavians do space 
very, very For well. For sure, yeah. Yep. Tiny yep. house nation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's um, eight page spread in house and garden next month. So oh, okay. Well, we're yeah. Yeah. Wait for no, that. no, no, that's <laughs> no, no, fine. No, no. no. We'll send you a little bit. Yeah, yeah that's, yep. that's no drama. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we're really yep. proud of it. And, yeah. Um, yeah it's, All for the tiny house movement at the is. moment. So what yeah. about when you're in trouble, mate? 32 square miles. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where are you going to go when you're in the dog house? Uh, look, there's actually nowhere to go. I just had the dogs for a while. <laughs> so we can't even go to the car. No. Well, no, 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 that's it. There's no car. No car space. <laughs> there's only one TV too, so... Every second night's PlayStation night, and every other <laughs> night is um, Jersey Shore or whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, luckily, you've got on-demand TV. Exactly, there, yeah. exactly. I can catch up. So, Jennifer, for, for the listeners, what's some of the Design 101 principles that um, that people should know um, to help them present the house? Obviously, you've got to, uh, to the point where it's, uh, it's an eight-page feature, but what's some of the, the simple things mm-hmm. that the listeners can do to, to better present the house and better design it if they're thinking of doing something like what you guys are doing? Yeah, look, um, if you're not confident with it then definitely get professionals in um, sometimes we have tried to actually style which styled our first house in Aubrey ourselves when we sold it and it was really hard because we pulled furniture from everywhere to try to stage it we had a tenant in there so we pulled furniture from you know my sister's house and my mum's house and, we, and it was a lot of work yeah. whereas Maidstone we actually paid the real estate stylist girls to come in and obviously they do it they do it in four hours they get in they get it done but the definitely the key to styling a property for sale is trying to not be polarizing and everyone always says this don't be polarizing um, make it feel simple enough and decluttered enough that people can imagine their own furniture in the space but also so people walk in and understand how the room can be used and that's the key and it's just a lot of people just can't visualize when they walk into a house especially in a big open plan space where does the sofa go where does the dining table go Um, and it seems you know logical to to me but I feel like that's probably the downturn of open plan living Um, take away like all your family photos yep like avoid like red red splashbacks feature walls like I think that sort of thing yeah Yeah, anything polarizing we also like to sort of designate spaces so use rugs or lighting to kind of make your dining room or your living room just to separate those spaces but it's just keeping it simple decluttered you know fresh flowers or beautiful greenery throughout the space i think the the vendors just have to remember that the vendor is not the purchaser you know so you've got to take yourself out of that house and let someone else fall in love with it so in order to do that just because you think some certain things look good doesn't mean that other people will and um, i think with this like after using the, the real estate styles you've either got to go all in or nothing you know so take all your furniture out and start from fresh or you know it's got to be the whole package there can't be anything out of place yeah i i think that if you were to put your house on the market and stage it you need to move out so you just mm-hmm. you need to move out you need to get everything out of the house so when they open cupboard doors when, you know people yeah. walk through they can look through and there's nothing personal in there yeah. and i think that's when you get the best result and a lot of people can't justify doing that but in so when we did that through maidstone we i think we probably got an extra five or ten percent just because oh easy we, and as yeah. a, you got to think of it as a percentage so don't think of like the quoted fee to style the house like yeah. so the average house price now is what like in the is it mid sevens or something oh, in melbourne okay. pushing eight yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. You're talking like you know, like one percent of that. You know, it's yeah. it's a good investment, and yeah, yeah. You, say you spend seven thousand dollars, I reckon you get like thirty back. You yeah, know, like it's yeah, a no-brainer. Yeah, to stage it. Well, yeah. we, we talk about owner-occupier appeal yeah. and human interest and human behaviour. That's exactly what we're trying to tap into. Yeah. The yeah. moment I walk in, I want to make sure that there's lots of natural light, and then I want to be wowed. Yeah. yeah. First of all, when I pull up, I'm obviously yeah. thinking about my streetscape. Mm. Yes. Just yeah. exactly the way you said it before when you yeah. turned into that street in North Melbourne. Definitely. Yeah. And you saw the plane trees, and you went, "I love this street. Yeah. I want to buy on this street. <laughs> yeah, straight and away. It was wide. It gave you a sense. Of, and now. Then it's obviously, you know, you've kept that cottage at the front. So same sort of principles. Yeah. I mean, it isn't that hard when you talk it through. Yes. But when you're in it, you know, you're clouded. You can't see the wood between the trees. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and it is. It's the first impression. And the idea is that you want to create that emotion. So you want someone to walk in and go, I love this place and I can see myself living here. Yes. Yeah. 100%. 
Are you guys uh, sort of actively always thinking that you'd renovate? Is there ever a time where you could look at a property and just say, right, we're going to park our cash in here long term, or would you just get itchy feet? No, we could never do that. <laughs> I wish we, could, I wish we could, but we just see potential in everything. I think Josh knows every single house that's on the market in about fifty suburbs. I reckon I spend at least. <laughs> Probably an hour and a half a day on yeah the property apps like the yeah. realestate.com and all that sort of stuff. So yeah. just we yeah. yeah and looking at places that we can add value to yep. and you know we've just said that once we get our house done you know we can run wild and yeah. find something but we've never to this day found a property where we've gone perfect we would love that and it's done. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you plumber for? Why don't you come and work with us? <laughs> yeah, look, I, I think we, we get a kick out of trying to predict the the next suburb. So the, our, our first one was obviously Maidstone and then we and then North Melbourne. But now it's interesting because, you know, the, the $750,000 budget, like you can't get in that 10K radius no. anymore. Like Sunshine now is a million dollar suburb. Yeah. So Jen and I talk a lot about this and we've been recently looking in like Mount Macedon yep. because if I had $750,000, I wouldn't want to live in a new estate where all the houses look the same. I want to drive the same distance out, like 50 minutes out of the city. It's like, feels like premium real estate. It's got a nice little village feel. You still got a um, train line with access to the city. Yep. It's short drive out and you know, you're know getting like half an acre with a beautiful old home for like 700,000. So I think those outer suburbs, you know, are gonna be where it's gonna go next is our sort of prediction. Okay. Big okay. and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Only until this goes live. <laughs> <laughs> now everyone yeah, knows where to buy. Yeah. <laughs> Josh and Jenna are. Um, if you had 750, um, I suppose you've answered the question, w without it being Mount Macedon, okay. um, where would you, would you consider investing interstate? Uh, or does it have to be the fact that you want to have that hands-on practical application of it? I, I'd like to stick to where, where I know. And I think that even though there's a lot of, there's an oversupply of apartments, as I know, because that's all I've been building for the last like, at work. It's all we've been plumbing for the last sort of seven years is just mm -hmm. multi-storey apartments. I think those smaller blocks of flats in those um, nice inner city suburbs like your Carlton's, your Thornbury's, your Northcote's, uh, maybe like those 70s block of flats where there are two better car space and a courtyard. I think the courtyard um, is going to be what sort of turns people towards that sort of living. Sort, I, wouldn't yeah. be, I wouldn't be buying a new apartment for, I think, um, getting you know your, your money back and um, that sort of thing, something with a with a courtyard, so you can have a dog and a barbecue and that sort of lifestyle. Mm, I like it, fantastic. What's the best piece of property advice you've been given? Oh, what advice have we been given? And while you're pondering that, what's the we worst? get a lot of bad advice. Uh, yeah, <laughs> most we do. most of the places we actually every house, our first house, our parents were like. Don't, well, my dad was a banker for 35 years, so you can imagine his view on houses. He's like, you've got to have $200,000 saved up and you know, all this <laughs> yeah. stuff. And, and we Don't actually take got a, a debt. No, 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 a no. banker who, who well, lends money for a yeah, yeah, yeah. The know. first house we bought, it was a no, It was when there was no deposit home loan. Uh, <laughs> so we came, back, we came yeah. back from an overseas trip with like a $20,000 credit card debt and we told our parents we were buying a house. <laughs> and they went, they went, no, 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 no. Maybe you should think about this. And we're like, we bought it. Now, <laughs> now I would be doing doing the same thing again yeah. coming here. $20,000 credit card, yeah. no deposit, yeah. exactly. and you're going hard. Yeah. Oh yeah, yep. yeah I would have, my professional advice would have been, <laughs> uh, maybe let's just see if we can get maybe some money in the down. bank. Exactly. Get into the black from the red. <laughs> cool. I think just research, like a lot of our friends are like, oh look, I've got this much money, where should I buy? And I'm just like, look, read your magazines, get on realestate.com, see what the market's doing. Yeah, yeah, location school. Uh, yeah, location. Yeah, location school. Yeah, yeah. So just a little plug for us. Oh, yes. oh yeah, yeah, beautiful. And also, um, look at like the local city council's website, see where the money's going, what they're yeah. spending it on, what's upcoming, train stations, hospitals, that sort yeah. of thing. Perfect. Um, make sure there's not like a major highway going next to where you're buying and that sort of thing. But yeah. just research, really. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, once you get the location right, Hmm. Then it is about just the value add. That's right. So I mean, you can you can be like me. I'm just a set and forget. That's the house. I'll go off and move on to the next one. Yes. But you guys have the you know the talent to craft. Yeah. And you have the time to do it, and you're passionate about it. Hmm. So. It just makes perfect sense that you keep following that vision and keep delivering on Yeah, your... and I think in a good market, that's why we're looking down the Airbnb route because we know that we can turn an average property, give it a cosmetic makeover and style it to really be something that people want to live in 
or rent, yeah. you know, for Perfect. Airbnb purposes. So that's where we see the value when the market's really hot, yeah. rather than flipping as such, because, yeah. you know, every man and their dog wants a renovator when the market's great. They think it's cheaper, but it's actually more expensive because it costs, you know, <laughs> yep. three yeah. times the amount you expect it's going to cost to actually renovate. Yeah. And yeah. maybe you just don't buy where everyone else is buying. Like, you <laughs> gotta look at that. I think looking at that ripple effect is, is very important. Yep. Um, so in terms of mindset, what's the biggest change that you you've had since you came into the public um, eye to what you had now. What have you learned along the way? What's the biggest change in your mindset from where you were a hairdresser just turning up on this one day a week show to now the world's a big place? Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) I think um, we've always been a believer that you take risks and if you take risks, we're we're just risk takers and we have done our whole lives and I think the perfect example is our parents that a lot of people have always said to us, that's a bad idea, you can't do that and I think that makes us do the opposite Um, and so far it's worked for us and it's not to say that it won't one day but I think that if you be quite conservative (laughs) you know you you're not going to possibly get as much out of it and so we again we bought Maidstone it was absolutely derelict Um, we literally fell through the floor one night when we were sleeping it was an awful house everyone said the location you know was terrible but we did it anyway because we sort of trusted that we knew Mm. that it was going to be okay and I think that's our big motto is that we've always taken risks. But yeah, I think for us, it's just been risk taking and again, applying to go on the block and doing the block. Everything that we've ever really done has been, I guess it's been a risk or something that the majority of people would go, oh, it seems a bit hard. I don't know what's going to happen. Whereas we say, awesome, let's do it. It's an opportunity. Where will that opportunity lead to? We don't know, but it's an opportunity. Mm And what about professional advisors? Have you got a financial planner? Do you have a mortgage broker? Do you have people around you that you're taking advice from? I'm assuming there would have been a few that reached out to you <laughs> uh, during your you know, high profile days. Yeah, we, we don't actually, to okay. be honest. We have been really busy. I think ever since we bought our first house, our lives have literally been buy houses, shows, you know, babies, businesses, yep. and it's been so hectic that we actually have never even stopped to go, oh, maybe we should yeah. think about it. We recently have just started to think maybe we need a new accountant and, you know, starting to get yeah. our life into place with yeah. having Freddie. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but no, we haven't as yet. a good yet. solicitor. Yeah, we yeah. have a good solicitor, yeah. but yeah. everything that... Work yeah, 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 he's a good So we... Town planner would have had to have been involved in the... Yeah, yeah. De- yeah definitely. Yeah, so we'll, 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 and You've got a, a solicitor that we've used, so when we look at properties, he's the one that we send in Section 32 yeah. to make sure we're all covered. Yeah. Um, also the subdivision, he helped us with that. We also had to acquire some land through adverse possession at North Melbourne, so he helped us with that. That too so um, I think like a good solicitor and, and yeah Colin he's, he's yeah been and, and f- you know as far as advice we've just done lots and lots and lots of research mm. beforehand and yep. again have a good loans manager taking at the those bank risks. someone yep. that you can bother a few times a week asking how much you can borrow <laughs> 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 very good final one for me Ben is yes. a- any any regrets about uh, you guys are Gen Y you you fully embraced the Instagram life so mm-hmm. but is there any regrets about being in the public eye any what, what are, what's the downside for you guys oh look there're probably no regrets but I think that what happened to us in the public eye or what happened to me with the whole social media and bullying and trolls sort of thing made me a stronger person and probably made us where we are today because we literally went, stuff you, we're going to succeed, we're going to, you know, go against what everyone else said. So, you know, it's been really positive for us. That experience from a negative experience has turned into a really positive one and I think that, you know, we've been given opportunities that we wouldn't if we weren't on the show. I think we still would have renovated because we had already bought two houses, two renovators before we were even accepted onto the block, but we just would have been a little bit behind where we are today. So I think we're very lucky. Yeah. So what's lucky. the message uh, to someone who's listening to this and they're being trolled and they're being um, bullied? What what's your advice to them? I think, yeah, you, it, it's up to you. These people are never going to change. Um, usually I just, you know, it helps me thinking that they're miserable people sitting at home in their pyjamas and doing this to you. And so it's all about you and your mindset. So just ignore what they're saying and use it as a positive and sort of try to prove them wrong. And so for me, I just went, well, look, you can say all you want, but I know who I am and I know that I've got family and friends around me that love me and I'm going to prove you wrong and yeah. I think that we've done that. Useful belief as we've yeah. got a, a podcast use- on that as a useful I always belief. think that um, happy people don't do that. So yep. yeah. um, unhappy people do that. And bro- 
broken. You had a bit of that early on. Yeah, it? broken people do do broken things to numb the pain. And yeah. early days when I got trolled, yeah. um, it wasn't through social media. It was largely through internet blogs and stuff. I just thought it was a, you know, a lawyer from Melbourne East who's on heaps of income, driving a BMW into work, just stopped and started <laughs> trashing me. But when yeah. when you think about it, they don't. Yeah. It's, no, it's, it's the people who don't enjoy their life yes. and you know doing a bit of tall poppy and they Get want to have caught a crack. up so in other people's lives. Once I once I realised that, I could um, I could quickly move past. Yeah. It, but, um, yep. Terrific. So, uh, I mean, we, I think we caught up for lunch uh, about a year ago when I invited you onto the couch. So <laughs> yeah, it's been a year. I, I, th- I think uh, it's been terrific to have you guys on. I think you've been busy. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, that's fully okay. That you've got time on the couch. <laughs> We've Thanks got the big guests us. coming on in August. Isn't it? Yes. Yeah, We've we got go. all the big guests in August. But uh, again, guys, thanks for yes. giving your time. Eight weeks us. since we've had Freddie, so yes. it's a big effort to come in. No, thank and, um, you. We will and she's been great. Yes. Just she's a couple good. little giggles. Yes. I'm rocking her mouth. And uh, uh, Josh and Jen are active on social media, so we'll have all their contact details in our show notes. So if you want to connect with them on SM, uh, feel free to do that. You'll get plenty of updates on Freddie. And the course? Yep, the designer course. Yeah, design school. Yeah. So if you head it over to Instagram on Josh and Jenny, you'll find the design school link. Beautiful. Check it out, folks. Check it out. Okay, Ben, my um, uh, life hack today um, is brought to you by a listener. Oh, that's, that's what you, you've reached out to them. You've I've asked reached, them. I've reached out and to someone's put. I've reached out to. This is the People's Podcast. Ben. It is. It so is. I've uh, put the call out there, and we've actually had someone come back to us and give us a life hack, Ben. So check this out. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so um, I have a life hack, and um, so what I do is I just use Siri. So I say to Siri, I hold down, I go, um, when I get to Woolworths, can you please remind me to get bread? Or when I go to the school, um, can you remind me to do this? And if you say the name of the place, it gives you options. So, like, if you said, can you remind me to get bread when I get to Woolworths, it goes, which one? And you can choose the location. It's really easy. So I just do it for like little reminders, like, oh, when I get home, can you please make sure I put the bins out? Or when I leave home, can you make sure I call such and such? So it's my little life hack that I wanted to share with you. You guys are awesome. All right, that's it. All right, bye. That's a ripper. That's a ripper. That's from Julia. So she's taking advantage. Going onto the website, Ben. Oh, yeah. Leave a little voicemail. There we Let go. Let us know. So there's a. Um, I want to talk to that. That that's pretty cool because obviously it's using the you know the tracking device. Yep. It's already built into the smartphone, mm-hmm. and it's knowing that you're going to get there. So the moment it gets there, it just pings you. So mate, I'm, I'm going, going to pre- I'm going to preframe yours on Siri. Don't forget to give Bryce a text message <laughs> later on just to let him know how you're going. So yeah. well, but, I uh, gave you one a couple of weeks ago, didn't I? Did that voice text? Remember? Yes. Do you know what I said to him? This is a test. <laughs> this is a test. There you go, Bryce. I can do it. Yes, Ben. I was I was I was absolutely wrapped that you did. I couldn't believe it to be honest. So taking my life hack. So there you go, folks. Thanks to Julia, uh, one of our loyal listeners. Thank you, um, Julia. Wonderful life hack and keep them coming. Did you know? Did you know? Okay, so we're doing air travel today. Some stats on some air travel. The five most popular routes of air travel in the world. London, Where are they? London, New York. No. No, So that, and they can be domestic as well. Oh. So coming in, top five. Number one is Seoul in Korea. Two, is it Jiju? Jiju is a, so it's a 450 kilometer flight right. and it has one way seat capacity in, at the end of 2016 of 6.56 million okay. commutes, wow. basically opportunities to fly there. Next, number two is Sapporo to Tokyo or vice versa. Mm-hmm. Um, that has 6.2 million seats. Uh, Fukioko Pardon? to Tokyo. <laughs> Fukioko <laughs> Fuk-e-oko to uh, Tokyo, 5.96. And coming in at number four is Anyone? Sydney, Sydney, London. Sydney, Melbourne. Oh. <laughs> Sydney, Melbourne, number four with 5.06 million. Um, and then number five is uh, Taipei to Hong Kong. So that's the number one international route because obviously Taipei is Taiwan and Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah. But there you go. So they're the top five busiest air flight routes in the world. Right. Good. Did, did you, know? you know? I didn't know that. That was the <laughs> But uh, again, guys, thanks for coming on. We'll uh, we'll catch up with you guys at some stage. And uh, Ben, get that video of those. Yes, that we'll get studio. that out. Yes. Yes. Yeah, 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 let's look have that. a look. <laughs> Absolutely. What magazine's going to be featured in? House and Garden. House and Garden. Check that out as well, folks. Um, but until next week, Ben. Knowledge is empowering, but only if you act on it, Bryce. Very good. Very <laughs> good. <laughs> you didn't get me that time. <laughs> All right, folks. We'll see you next week. Thanks,